What's up friends? Welcome back to Kimmy D TV, tips and tricks of living your best life. In this video, I'm going to be talking about how to pass microbiology. Before I start this video, don't forget to hit the thumbs up button, give it a like, hit the subscribe button, and hit the notification bell so that you never miss a video from me. Okay guys, so I just completed my microbiology course and... Whew. Okay guys, so I before I started microbiology, I did a lot of research. I tried to find online, on forums, and on YouTube like microbiology versus anatomy because if you guys didn't watch my other videos, I took anatomy one and two back to back. So I've basically been cramming these science prereqs to get them out of the way before I start the nurse nursing program. And I'm guys, I just can't have to say, I have to admit it, I'm so happy I got my sciences out of the way successfully thank God by the grace of God because these science courses are no joke so the number one thing I wanted to know like is which is harder anatomy or micro so I will let you guys know so in my opinion which is harder anatomy or micro so in the broad spec of it all if I look at it like broadly I believe that anatomy is harder and just because anatomy microbiology is broad but anatomy is just a lot more, um, not only is it broad, it's like very, very detailed. A micro could be very detailed too, but I don't know, I just can't explain. Like with micro, like you have your information, it's presented to you and you're supposed to know it. With anatomy, you have your information, it's presented to you, it's presented to you, you have to know it too. It's like they're both memorization games, but with anatomy, it's more like, okay, not only you have to know the anatomy, but you have to know the physiology too. So I'm sorry if I am confusing anybody. I know some colleges they do anatomy separate than physiology but for my college they combine anatomy and physiology together so that's why I feel like anatomy and physiology one and two was more difficult than micro because just anatomy and physiology is just way more information um, if I'm comparing both of them but let's go to microbiology and I think at the end I'll get like more of an idea so guys microbiology guys so in the beginning honestly it was easy um it was just like a a memorization game like the beginning of course the beginning chapters they were they weren't that much the only thing that was different this time around is i took my microbiology class in my nursing college this time and it was 10 weeks instead of my usual five weeks so honestly that was kind of like uh, to me because I'm so used to the short classes um, so I kind of felt like it was just dragged along oh. can you close the door please so with microbiology whether you take microbiology or anatomy first to me it doesn't really matter to me honestly I think it would have made more sense if I took microbiology first then take anatomy just because I want anatomy to be a little bit more fresher in my mind for nursing school but honestly like I took anatomy in June and July, so it's not that far apart. But some people go to nursing school and they took anatomy years ago and they still pass. But I understand why like anatomy and physiology classes expire so soon because it is so much information. Some schools it expires in five years, some schools expires in three years, but anatomy is very important. But microbiology, when I was beginning to take it, like the first couple of weeks, like I said, they were pretty easy. It was just like an introduction. But guys, as it progressed, it became increasingly, increasingly difficult. Now I'm going to show you the binder I used. So I tried the binder method. I tried the binder method this year because I was like, you know, I'm going to try to use a binder because everybody always uses a binder. Guys, so this is how my binder looks like now. It's just... Guys, it didn't work out. And I'm going to tell you why. And I want to ask people who use binders in school, like, how the hell do you guys do it? Because here's the thing. So... In this section, I just put like in the be like in the folders right here. I just put like different assignments that were due, like the syllabus. I put here. So in this section, um, like where this folder was, I put like the syllabus and stuff in here, and like just different assignments that are due. Please don't mind that. That's like something spilled there. That's a long story. And um, like different stuff. Like for example, this is antibiotics. This sensitivity test. Like like different stuff like different worksheets and handouts that our teacher gave us for lab and stuff like that so I put it there and then in here I put like you know like 
the PowerPoint slides. So what I did, if you guys were watching my vlog, so because I used to go to my other CUNY college, I could go there anytime and print out stuff for free, which I'm so happy. The CUNY college, I went for my anatomy and physiology class and I print out the slides and I'll put it in these um, sleeves because honestly guys, another thing about binders is that when you, if I were to punch holes in the regular sheets, like I know like over here, it would just rip out. So it's like, it was, it was just getting too much. Is this the light I gave you? Yeah. Wow. Who's the lucky you're using it? Thank you. So guys, yeah, the reason why um, the binder didn't work is that, like, let's say, first of all, it doesn't make sense to leave all the chapters in the binder. So I have to remove those chapters put in the new chapters in the sleeves and it just it just was way too time consuming i'm never gonna use a binder again like i don't i don't see why people use binders i guess it's for people who are really 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 neat and i try my best to be organized i'm not the most organized person but honestly for me just for me comment down below if you don't like binders i don't like binders to me it's just way too time consuming and i cannot have papers that are ripped in the holes like no it has to be in the sleeve i don't have time to put in the sleeve like that time could be used towards studying but guys basically i'm not using a binder anymore um but basically guys what i did is that um of course be um in the beginning i was reading the slides before i went to lecture so my advice is for microbiology definitely definitely and i didn't do this all the time but i wish i would have before you come to class, make sure you read your lecture, okay? The whole essence, the whole piece, like if you guys don't take anything from this video, one thing I take for this, one thing I want you guys to take from this video, with microbiology, the more you're exposed to the information, the more it will stick to your brain, to your long-term memory, and the more you will the more chances you have of passing the exam. Because depending on your teacher, sometimes the questions can be tricky. Sometimes the question could be very, very detailed. Like don't just it's not it's not a subject that you just brisk through, okay? So read the slides the night before, the day before the exam. Not, not, I'm sorry, read the slides the day before you're supposed to go into lecture or on your train on the way to, um, on your train ride or your bus ride on the way to class, read the chapter that you guys going to go over on the slides. Speaking of chapter, no, I never, ever, ever use the book. <laughs> no, that's a lie. I did use the book. Okay, I didn't purchase the textbook because my school actually had a textbook where they, you could rent it out. Now, I wasn't allowed to physically take it out and like go home with it, but I was able to use it in the school. So if I didn't understand the concept or something, I would read maybe that section in the textbook. But honestly, like I rarely did that. Um, the main thing I used the textbook was for is like the practice questions that they had. So whatever microbiology book you're using, nine times out of ten, they have practice questions. I strongly urge that you do it because sometimes you think that you get a concept and you like you're sure like you're sure like you're sure that you've got a concept but you don't really know if you got a concept until you practice the question so make sure you practice question do the practice questions at the end of the chapter even if it's even if those questions are not assigned to you make sure you do it like take the initiative to do those questions um, another tip I want to give for microbiology and you guys are not gonna like this but you must study every single day. I'm not saying kill yourself every day, but even if it's 30 minutes, I'm telling you guys. Now, I'm not going to lie, there, were, there was this one weekend, like, like I think it was a Friday, Saturday, Sunday, and that time, like, I don't know, it was just a lot going on, so I, you know, honestly, it was my fault. I did not... I chose not to study that weekend, okay? I chose to Netflix and chill, and, um... Basically, I had to catch up with myself and that whole and then that following week I had like a test and Yeah, it looked like I have wow. I have seven days to study, but you have to take into consideration I go to work. I don't just go to school. I go to work. I have a life. I have stuff to do um, It was the most stressful week of my life because I had to catch up with all those chapters and those chapters can be lengthy So my advice is to study every single day even if it's little every single day Because I'm gonna give you guys an example of how microbiology is like for example You will have an organism you will have to know its virulence factors You will have to know how does it produce a disease like endotoxin like for example I'm gonna just give you an example like what is an example I can give you? 
talking about tuberculosis. Tuberculosis is such a popular disease. You have to know what it's caused by tubercle bacillus, right? You have to know what a bacillus is. Like, is it a rod or is it coco bacillus? It's virulence factors, um, the epidemiology of it, the predisposing factors. Uh, what else? You have to know the course of infection of disease, um, different stuff like primary TB, secondary TB, what is the Latin phase, latent phase if they have it, the incubation phase, how long, like so for example incubation is like the time period bef like once the person is exposed to the microorganism to the first day of symptoms, um, how is it treated, what med some some teachers will go in and ask you the medications, some won't or some want you to know a few here and there. That's another thing. In class, like even though it's a memorization game, I'm not going to tell you guys like just don't go to class. I went to every single class, number one, because I have to pay out of pocket. And number two, because some stuff like the teacher like says, make sure you know that make sure you put a star because those are the stuff that like let's say it was there were times i'm not gonna lie i'm human like there's last minute and um i didn't have that much time to study but i put a star next to it like i know like okay even though i don't have time to study for this part but i know i definitely have to know this drug for this disease like you know what I mean? So what I'm trying to say is like don't underestimate microbiology. Make sure you start studying like from the beginning and it will make the final easier. But guys, I'm not going to lie. The final was a beast. The final, I had six chapters to study for. It was a beast. But, you know, by the grace of God, I was able to go through it. You know, if you have a question, maybe make sure you ask. It's really your um, responsibility to take control of your education at the end of the day. Um, but make sure, like I said, you print out the slides um, and you write down, like, like see, like, I took little notes, like, I'm going to show you guys, like, um, important on exam, um, no differences in names, like, make sure you know it, like, make sure you print out your slides. Some people, their computer, um, tech, at that time I didn't have a laptop, so I had to print them out. Sometimes if you could type the notes and put it on, like, in the slides on the computer, that's perfect. Me, I just love writing things down. I'm just tactile like i said i could be giving out my age here but i just I, I i didn't grow up in a period where it's like everything is technology 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 but if that works for you go ahead but i just like writing it down i don't know something about writing it down i could colorify it make it in different pens i mean you get to do that in the computer too but i don't know i was just stubborn in that way that i just wanted to write it down and you know what that's what worked for me and i could whip it out anytime i want to and study whenever wherever however i want to but it's something like i don't want you guys to think microbiology is something like you breeze by it's just something that you it takes a lot of time now the question is can you take it with other classes definitely you can because some people in my class were taking their nursing courses while they were taking micro and whoo I saw how they were stressed out and you know I feel for them and I'm happy they all passed but I just feel like I'm so happy I got that over with because it is a lot like microbiology is a lot um but yes you can take it with other courses I wouldn't bombard myself but like I just want you guys to go into it knowing like if you guys can take it separate like over the summer like definitely do it if that is an option take microbiology separate over the summer but then again you have to think about it most nine times out of ten summer school could be fast paced you know but it all depends on the college like you know what i mean so summer school may be two months which is not too bad versus five weeks which is really really fast so you know it really just depends on you but just know it's a lot a lot of memorizing at, especially towards the end like like i said you have to know the diseases um the kind of microorganisms that cause this disease was it violence factors how does it attack the body what kind of toxins does it choose like endotoxin a plus b subunit um guys it's a lot i'm not gonna lie you have for microbiology you have to study every single day there's no skipping one day like you have to study every single day if you skip a day like we're all humans like i skip days Make sure you have that, you have one day where you're going to study all day, like literally all day because it's a lot. The main key with microbiology is make sure you are repeatedly seeing the information. Make sure you're taking um, practice questions. If you have a chance to form study groups, even better. Um, unfortunately, I didn't have that chance because at that time, if you guys been watching my videos, I was transitioning from you know i was just going through a lot with my job and um i was going to tour i was going through um 
uh, I was going through orientation and stuff like that, so I didn't really have a lot of time. I was interviewing for different jobs, so I didn't really have time to like, okay, let's start, form a study group. I was just trying to secure the bag. But, um, but yeah, guys, um, that's why I didn't get a chance to do a study group, but this really helped me. So, yeah, guys, that is my tips. These are my tips on microbiology. You guys can do it. Um, there were times when I felt like, oh, my God, this is so much. Don't have a mental breakdown. Breathe. <sighs> okay, you guys can do it. It's just microbiology. You guys can get through it. Um... Some of these diseases may present themselves in your nursing class or your physician assistant class or whatever program you're in. But I wish you guys the best of luck. Don't give up. Keep going. If you guys have any specific questions, just leave it down in the comment below. But just remember, the main elements of this is study every single day, ask questions, record lectures you have to. It's a memorization game. And to help you memorize, just know the more you see. And make sure you memorize what you have to memorize and don't ever give up. And like I said, if you guys have any questions, don't forget you can reach out to me on Instagram, Facebook, YouTube, and my email, communitytv at gmail.com. Thank you guys so much for watching. I'll see you later. Bye!